Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening to respected speaker, cautious timekeeper, honorable judge, member of the WCN team and the member of the floor. Before I start present my humble point today, let us delve into the essence of our today's motion. This house firmly believe that in order to safeguard the right of children and eradicate the discourage of forced labor, individuals below the age of 18 years old should be strictly prohibited from engaging in any form of employment and receiving any form of remuneration. As the Prime Minister and the first Speaker of the Government and today's motion, I will now present our initial argument. Here, our government believes that in order to protect children and abolish forced labor, any person below the age of 18 years old must not be allowed to work and receive any payment at all. We believe that there are a lot of detriment and drawback effect on the child if they were allowed to be working at an early age. Here, the detriment will be debated in further and detail by the member of our government. As a start off, we firmly contended and believe that the existing legal and regulatory framework fall short in effectively safeguarding children eliminating forced labor. To support our stance, we turn into the International Labor Organization, ILO, and its establishment of crucial convention and that establishment international standard of child labor. In particular, the minimum age convention number 138 and the worst form of child labor convention number 182 prioritize the protection of child rights and well-being. This conviction laid down specific provision, including setting minimum age for works, which serve the fundamental safeguard for children welfare. Here, specifically, Article 3 of the Minimum Age Convention number 138 asserts that the minimum age for admission to any form of employment or work that could pot potentially endanger health, safety, or moral integrity of young individuals shall not be below 18 years old. Meanwhile, within the framework of nation law, it is crucial to acknowledge that the prohibition on child employment is not absolute at all. As stated in Section 2 of Children and Young Person Employment Act of 1966, this session highlights the presence of exception and regulation that allow for employment of children under specific condition, which stimulously establishing measures to safeguard their welfare and rights. Now, we, as the member of government, believe that the current legal provision lack the necessary strength and specificity to adequately protect the right and well-being of children. So, why do we so? Why we say so? It is evident that the current legal provision lack the necessary strength and specifically to adequate protect the right of and well-being of children as studied by Alec Oz itself stated globally of approximately 246 million children between the age of 5 and 17 years old are engaged, are engaged in child labor with around 171 million involved in hazardous uh, work that endanger their safety, health and moral development. Additionally, an estimated 8.4 million children are trapped in the worst form of child labor, including forced labor, child trafficking, use in armed force, and commercial sexual exploitation. Here, 9 million more children are estimated to be forced to work at the end of 2022, amounting to at least 168.9 million children primarily in workforce. It is also notable that children labor are often working in agriculture, service, and industry, whereby 72.1% uh, are working within their own family unit, 17.3% 17 17 employed is outside of their families, and remaining 10.7% are own account worker. In Malaysian context, Although there is no national child labor survey in Malaysia, and we totally depending on global statistics, it does not mean that the issue of child labor doesn't occur in this country. Here, we refer that various studies and empirical evidence had been done which indicate that child labor is happening in certain pockets of both rural and urban areas around the country, 
as one study which conducted in Sabah, in Tawau Sabah shows that. Therefore, as a conclusion, we, the government, strongly agree that in order to protect children and abolish the labor force, any person below the age of 18 years old must not be allowed to work and receive any payment at all. So that's all from me. Thank you. Now I pass the floor to the member of opposition. Thank you. Uh, children from the age of five until the age of 17 are the minor that are engaged in child labor. However, according to the United Nations Children's Fund, in early 2020, it was estimated that around 160 million children were subjected to child labor. However, it skyrocketed to 9 million due to the pandemic outbreak and is continuously on the rise. As the affirmation team had introduced earlier, the law must be adhered in order to protect children under 18 years old in the working field. However, as the opposition team, we strongly disagree with the motion that children below the age of 18 must not be allowed to work and receive payment in order to protect them and eliminate forced labor. Because children, uh, child labor does not necessarily connotes to forced labor. As child labor is legal in Malaysia and illegal child labor is not, it is subject to strict regulations. Under section 1A, clause 1, of the Children and Young Persons Employment Act 1966 defines a child as any person who had not completed his 14th year of age and a young person is defined as any person not completed his 16th year of age. In Malaysia, children are allowed to work as they are protected under the Employment of Children and Young Persons Act, where a child above the age of 15 is allowed to be employed under certain under specific circumstances. When it comes to consent, a child who has attained the age of 16 is presumed to have a valid consent due to their maturity and ability to understand the consequences of the work that, that they voluntarily submitted to. For example, the, of the offense of statutory rape under section 375 clause G of the penal code implies that as she has attained the age of 16, she has the ability to give consent as well as Section 17, Clause 1 of the Poisons Act, where the provision allows children to buy poison for the purpose of their own health care. On the other hand, for a child under 15 years old, the Convention on the Rights of the Child in Article 5 encourages children under the age of 18 to be involved in decisions and recognize their values in accordance with their age and maturity level, especially in getting involved in the working field while taking into account Article 18 of the CRC earlier, which somehow includes the parents' common responsibilities in raising their children so that they are able to guide their children in their decision-making. Based on the examples uh, given earlier, it is shown that Malaysia had sufficient laws to regulate child labour in order to protect them from forced labour and in matters of consent. Uh, children under the age of 15 is decided upon their uh, parents or guardians' permission on the basis of the best interest for the child, whereas children above 18, uh, 17 is upon discretion, where the law acknowledges their consent as effective and valid even without the parents' permission due to their ability to make decisions based on their intelligence. So for a child, it is common, especially in rural and local areas. It is important to note that in matters involving child labor, there are strict laws being regulated to safeguard their well-being and allows them to work since this is widely practiced. So in banning these children from working would actually tarnish their livelihood and their ability to support their family. Uh, these children may be employed in light work done within the family, maybe in specified public entertainment as in, in acting, uh, apprenticeships or work sponsored by the government, as long as it is not a threat to their life, limb, health or morals. So generally, forced labor is prohibited under the federal constitution, i.e. Article 6. However, the law is definitely silent on prohibiting children from working, which indicates that Malaysia as a country condemns the practice of child labor, as again has been expressly stated under the Children and Young Persons Employment Act. Nevertheless, in the same provision where the sentence stated, quote unquote, other than those specified in this section, it somehow be understood 
to legal child labor, which indicates that in some situations, children are allowed to work and receive income. Under Section 2, Clause 2 of the Children and Young Persons Employment Act, on the surface, there are four types of work that permit children to gain income, such as light work in relation to family run or family run, um, own businesses, maybe in terms of the working field of public entertainment, as I as, that as, as, uh, said earlier, sorry, or maybe works that are sponsored by the government within a school or institution. In fact, if the employer is found violating one of these rules, perhaps uh, they will indeed receive a penalty. So the law is sufficient in protecting these children as under the same act, it provides a wide range of curfews where the children are not allowed to work, such as they define uh, hazardous uh, labors and also penalties. Therefore, we as the opposite, opposing team stand by the motion that children below the age of 18 must be allowed to work and receive payment so that these children are protected under the law and eradicate forced labor. So next, I'll be passing it to the next. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Hafiza Anissa binti Muhammad Noor and I am the second speaker of the government member. So, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished member of the audience, Today, we as a member of the government stand before you to shed light on an issue of utmost importance, the impact of labour on children's education and its far-reaching consequences. First and foremost, engaging in labour undoubtedly has its merit, providing individuals with valuable skills and also financial independence. However, we must recognize that it also carries certain drawbacks, particularly when it comes to the education and overall development of our younger generation. When children take on paid work, they inevitably find themselves facing a shortage of time and energy to devote to their studies, assignments, and school-related activities. As a result, their, their academic performance suffers, learning opportunities become limited, and their educational progress become hindered. This adverse situation becomes even more dire when we consider that some children are entirely denied access to education due to their work engagement. So education, as we all know, is not merely a means to acquire knowledge, but it is a vital foundation for future prospect, individual growth, and the overall development of a nation. Secondly, recognizing the significance of education as the primary focus for children's development, we as a member of government must take steps to prohibit them from engaging in labor and receiving payment. By doing so, we emphasize the paramount importance of education and create an environment where children have the opportunity to fully pursue their studies without the burden of work. In this way, we promote their intellectual, social, and emotional growth, equipping them with the knowledge and skills necessary for their future success. Additionally, by breaking the cycle of poverty through education, we can reduce the demand for child labor, thereby creating a more just and equitable society. Next, while it is true that there is no guarantee that education alone will lead to greater life prospect, it is an indispensable requirement. Moreover, for the minimum age convention, as established by the International Labour Organization, ILO, asserts that the minimum age for employment should not be lower than the age at which compulsory schooling is completed. So in the context of Malaysia, for instance, children are expected to complete their lower secondary education between the ages of 15 and 16, which this implies that they should wait until they are between the ages of 18 before embarking on paid work. And it is widely believed that early participation in labor can actually disrupt a child's formal education with various adverse effects. Child labor often presents significant challenges to children's engagement in the educational system. Their working hours begin to compete with the school activities, causing them to lose focus and impeding their academic performance. Although conclusive evidence may be lacking, there are indications that 
working at such a young age negatively affects children's academic performance due to the reduced attention to academic activities. Moreover, the burden of work may make it difficult for them to catch up on the missed schoolwork either due to lack of class time or physical exhaustion. Consequently, these children frequently miss school and consequently receive poor grades. When students consistently receive poor grades, it can have a profound impact on their self-esteem and overall confidence. This may begin to question their abilities, leading to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. This erosion of self-belief can extend beyond the classroom, affecting their motivation, willingness to take risks, and their overall outlook on life. In addition, poor academic performance can also limit students' opportunities for further education. And nowadays, many institutions of higher learning have strict admissions requirements, often including minimum grade point averages and standardized test scores. When students fall short of this expectation due to labor, their chances of pursuing desired desired career path or attending prestigious universities may be significantly diminished. This can have long-term consequences of their professional prospect and limit their option for future success. Therefore, in light of this observation, it becomes crucial for us as a society to prioritize the protection of children's education by restricting their involvement in, light, in labor. Let us strive to create an environment where our young ones can thrive academically, develop their full intention, and escape the clutches of poverty. And by doing so, we not only secure a, bright, a brighter future for the children, but also foster the growth and progress of our nation as a whole. Thank you. Now I pass to the member of the position. The first reason on why that child labor should be allowed is because of the economic contributions. Um, throughout uh, the histories, uh, children has have uh, contributed to the economic upkeep, not only to the families and also to the country. And when the families lost their livelihood, their income, and uh, uh, the life of them become uh, almost insufferable, and these people are prompted to seek a different path in order to make a living. And in most of the cases, that children are sent to work because of poverty. Uh, so the first part I'm going to talk about is uh, regarding the contributions to the family and the reason why that child labor should be allowed is when the families cannot afford uh to the bed to meet their basic needs like um, like having a food water um shelter education and even uh and help health, uh health care so this family have no choice no other choice but uh, they need uh to send their children to work in order to supplement uh all the household income and they also see uh, this work as the best use of their time in contributing uh, the needs of the family and they also see this work uh, as a preparation for them uh, for the life that they expected to lead in the future. For instance, like um, in the case where the family members are, are, uh, are sick and uh, is not able uh, to do a certain physical work, they usually depend on the children for earning. And in other cases, like a rural family where they depend on the reliable seasons for farming, and they are also one of the vulnerable group uh, where they will be badly affected uh, by the extreme weather because uh, their job that related to farming. And this effect of the natural disaster and also the climate change uh, become becoming an increased concern because um, these farmers are uh, witnessing that their crops are being destroyed, uh, the, farm, uh, the farming line is ruined because of the climate change and because of this reason they have no other choice but they need to send their children to work and, and due, due to these reasons uh, the family survival of poor household often depends on the children's work either it be in the monetary form or in kind of contributions and if there is like a loss of income because of the eliminations of the child labor, it could negatively affect the poor children and also the poor family. And the second part is about the contributions uh, towards the country. So by allowing the child labor, it could increase uh, the economic growth of a country. 
uh, because some of the working sectors and also industry, they require uh, child, uh, the child labor employment because of the lack of workers and this will reduce the productivity of a country. So by recruiting a child uh, to work, it could reduce the productivity and also uh, the productivity gap and also uh, efficiently um, increase the productivity. For instance, like the child could help um, in the timing or simple job uh, in order to uh, cover the adult who are working in the complex task and also in regards to the cost, the cost for child labor are much more cheaper because um, children um, generally make considerable less compared to adult for doing the same uh, work or job and this uh, could save the employer uh money and also they at the same time could uh, make their product uh, more competitive in the market. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Naisha binti Mahadi and I'll be the third government speaker. So according to UNICEF, nearly one in ten children are subjected to child labor worldwide, with some are uh, forced into hazardous work through trafficking. By allowing children age 18 and below to work, uh, it exposes them to slavery and sexual exploitation due to their innocent minds. When they are desperately uh, wanting to work, they are willing to take up any job to financially support themselves or their family, which includes working within sexual and illicit uh, activities. The International Labour Organization, ILO, number 182 sets out the worst forms of child uh, labor that should be uh, eliminated as a matter of urgency and that includes forms of exploitation such as slavery forced labor trafficking and hazardous work it also calls for appropriate action to ensure the rehabilitation and social integration of child victims so by prohibiting individuals below 18 from working and receiving a payment and receiving payment helps protect children by preventing these exploitations against the children. Children are often not uh, not aware of their rights or lack the power to assert them. So they may lack knowledge about fair wages, safe working conditions or the right to education. Employers and traffickers can take advantage of their vulnerability and manipulate them into exploitative, exploitative measures. So exploitation can take in many forms, such as hazardous uh, conditions where children are working in a dangerous environment that pose risk to their safety and health. This can include working with toxic substances, heavy machinery, or in extreme temperatures. Even uh, if the children work in an appropriate environment, it still affects the physical and mental well-being of the children by creating unnecessary uh, stress at a young age. Children who work are often made to work long hours, depriving them of sufficient time for rest, play and education. This can have negative effects on their physical and mental health well-being. Although the Child and Young Persons Amendment Act had mentioned that children are only allowed to work six hours a day, it could still take a toll on them, especially when they are still attending school and it could lead them uh, to be left behind in their studies. Consequently, this limits their future opportunities and perpetuates the cycle of poverty. Hence, the government believes by imposing a complete ban on children below 18 from working, we eliminate the opportunity for forced labor and ensure the well-being of the children. That's all from me. I'll pass off to the opposition team. Before moving to our next point, I will first repeat the weak point submitted by the government. It was said by the third speaker of the government side earlier that by allowing the children to work, they will be exposed to slavery and sexual exploitation due to their innocent mind. However, we in the opposition team do not agree with this statement made by the government as there are a lot of better works that the children could choose and be exposed to besides library and also sexual jobs. Even to add, we believe that children nowadays are much more advanced and intelligent enough to think about what is good and what is bad for them as most of the children were having at least a primary education 
which they might be learned and thought about this as well. So even with the fact that our, now, our era nowadays is much more advanced with the assistance of technologies, thus there are a lot of flexible and also stress-free work that the children could opt for besides strictly following the common 9am to 5pm working hours which is said could, be a, could cause exhaustion and also stress to the children. I will further explain regarding the work in my submission. Okay, so moving on to our third submission, which is working child could help in poverty alleviation. So poverty alleviation is basically refers to the effort and initiative in um, eradicating uh, the poverty. So the issue of child labor is indeed complex and controversial, as it is important to emphasize that child labor is generally considered unacceptable and illegal in most countries. However, I will here attempt to provide a balanced perspective on this issue. Besides could help in contributing to the economy, it also can contribute to income generation. In certain extreme cases, children can work due to the dire economic circumstances of their own families. In such a situation, working child can provide some income to, the, uh, to support the family basic needs. So this income can help elevate immediate poverty and improve living condition as well as can provide access to better nutrition, healthcare and also education opportunities. So in discussing this issue, we should and it must be emphasized that in our country measure, our law does not totally prohibit children from working. The minimum legal age for employment in Malaysia is 14 years old and under the Employment Act 1955 and also the Children and Young Person Employment Act 1966, teenagers between the age of 14 and 16 can only engage in light work that is not hazardous to their health or safety or development. They are prohibited from working in certain sectors such as manufacturing, construction and also mining. Meanwhile, for teenagers aged 16 and 17, they have a wider range of employment options available for them, but there are still limitations to protect their right in which they are not allowed to work, work in hazardous occupation or in jobs that require excessive physical harm. But to clarify this issue, we should first understand the meaning of the word work. Work basically refers to the physical or mental effort exerted by individuals to perform tasks, carry out responsibilities, or engage in activities. Work can take various forms and occur in different contexts, including paid employment, self-employment, voluntary work, and domestic tasks. So, we cannot limit our understanding of work where work must be related to doing heavy things such as labor, factories, and so on. As long as it involves activities of performing tasks, it can be deemed as work even if it is a light work. So, from the definition itself, we can clearly see that the people under the age of 18 years old who are called as teenagers can also be actively involved in working and receiving payments. In our current era, there are actually a lot of simple works that teenagers can join in order to help their families. And in fact, in our great technology as well, most of the work can even be done at home with flexible time which will not affect the teenagers' times and life, such as most of the common works usually involve the teenagers is modeling or paid reviewing. This kind of job can also be referred to as a work as it does involve of performing tasks and to be specific, it falls under light work as it does not involve any heavy physical activities and most of the time, this kind of job could be done flexible at any time and anywhere. So to strengthen our argument, it is undeniable that in Malaysia actually there are a lot of cases where teenagers could successfully make their own money by working on their own, which in return it could give a huge impact in easing their family's burden. One example in Malaysia is the life of one of the famous influencers in Malaysia, which is Tira Kamaruzaman, who in fact, she started to work when she was at the age of 14 years old. It all started when she took a job on Instagram by becoming a model for some products and brand, which later she was getting paid for it. So she also said that this kind of job actually really helped her a lot as she didn't have to ask for money from her parents anymore as she could earn it by herself. So here, we could clearly see by working, it could actually help 
the teenagers to ease their family burdens. To conclude our argument, it is again, it is undeniable that allowing children or teenagers to work could actually help a lot in helping to ease their family's burden as well as to eradicate poverty. We should let them decide by themselves whether they want to work or not and we cannot totally prohibit them from working as there are actually a lot of opportunities out there which are suitable for people of their ages in not only improving themselves but also to help their families. So here, we want to stress again that we could not limit our understanding of work by um, defining the terms work as a physical activities or um, hard physical activities. But we should also consider the light work such as modeling and also pet reviewing as one of the work or light work which can be involved by the children or teenagers as well. My name is Muhammad Shahmi bin Saiful Mu'alim and as the fourth government speaker, I would like to re-emphasize our position and stance on the, on the abolishment of forced labor in accordance with Article 6, Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution and thus protecting the welfare of children in this country through the prohibition of any person below the age of 18 from working or receiving any payment. Another main reason for which we have brought forward this proposition is in order to eliminate the economic incentives on the part of the employers to engage in child labor. For this purpose, it is important for us to refer back to the very main reason on why these children end up working in the first place, which is mainly derived from the condition or cycle of poverty that they are in, consequently forcing them to work and earn money in their family. This had also been made worse subsequent to the previously enforced MCO or movement control order in Malaysia a few years back in order to combat and put a stop to the pandemic of COVID-19 due to the fact that they were driven to work in order to assist their parents financially. According to Professor Dato' Nur Azia Muhammad Awal, the children Commissioner of Suhakam. Nonetheless, the real question that one should ask oneself is, has this purpose been achieved? Does the fact of the child working extra hours in addition to their study had eased their situation or contrastingly adding to it? To this, we would firmly answer as no, due to the fact that not only had they been majorly exploited by the employers during this MCO time and thus had been greatly underpaid inconsistent with the work that they had done, further made worse through their nature of being innocent and naive and causes them to easily be taken advantage of by their employer, but it had also bring more setbacks and disadvantages to them as extra hours and effort put into their work had at the same time risk their own future by ruining their opportunity or potential to achieve greater success in their education and consequently upgrade their condition of life as they are being forced to put more focus into their work in an attempt to ease the burden of their family when in actual fact it does nothing apart from keeping them in the very same cycle of poverty for example example, it had also been found that despite the long hours of labor participated in by these children, it had only amounted to a monthly pay of a few hundred ringgit, while at the same time being subject to different forms of abuse, such as physical, emotional, as well as neglect, and finally sexual harassment experienced by them at workplace. Hence, this is where the elimination of economic incentives on the part of these employers by denying payment to individuals below 18 years of age, while but also their employees comes into the picture as when they are being deprived of the financial gains associated with employing a child to do a work without a suitable pay, it will consequently hinder them from continuing to engage in such practices and this will in return play a major part in our step towards the abolishment of forced labor in Malaysia while at the same time protecting the welfare of these young children who are being forced to work in these working conditions which proves to be detrimental towards them. This is particularly so considering that the employers may again take advantage of them by assigning many works to these children but without a suitable or appropriate pay for their work done and the flexibility afforded to them in hiring and employing multiple part-timers consisting of students below 18 years of age instead of having several fixed and full-time employees with higher pays and wages. Further illustrating this point, it has also been discovered that although there is no definite data for child labor in Malaysia, it could also be deduced that this had especially been contributed to by the fact that most of these young child workers are part of the marginalized communities in Malaysia, where most of them 
and an estimated number of 33,000 children are working in palm oil plantations which are far hidden from the public authorities. This, for instance, also includes the community of Bajau Laut in Sabah, where children had opted to work and earn money by doing certain odd jobs, including begging for money on the streets, which consequently had exposed them to various forms of abuse due to them being deprived from the basic and fundamental rights, such as proper education or even healthcare. To this effect, alternatively, another solution that may be proposed from our part in order to bring them out of this cycle of poverty instead of allowing them to work will be to place our focus in improving the studying condition of the child at school as a study of other countries such as Indonesia, Mozambique and Ghana as contained in a journal article titled Critical Analysis on the Children and Young Person Employment Act 1966 and the Education Act 1996 in relation to causes and effect of child labor in Malaysia also shows that parents prefer their children to work and earn money to support the family instead of to learn and obtain education at school in preparing them towards becoming a successful person Person in the future due to the poor educational infrastructures available in schools around the country which remains old while the world is developing more and more around us. With that, I will end my, my point and pass the floor to the next opposition speaker. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our next step is working at Chai Air will enhance skill development. Employment demands a broad concept of character abilities, from politeness to grasping the fundamental of professionalism. I may look like a baby, but I was born all grown up. It's a line from the animated comedy film The Baby Boss, which tells the story of talking Chai who dressed up as an office manager. Behind the absurd situation lies a lot of truth. Children develop skills very early in their life that will stay with them into the adult scene and also beyond into the adult workplace. To begin with, kids workers can develop communication and interview skills at a very young age. Children need basic life skills such as how to sit appropriately, shake hands, turn off electronics when talking to someone, keep eye contact, communicate clearly and also even how to respond to questions. Dr. Eva Lloyd Professor of Early Childhood at the Cass School of Education and Communities, University of East London, told their news. Children, especially in the early years, are like a little sponge, absorb all the information around them and then actively making sense of it. Next, we believe that the opponent's position does not take into the account that working from the childhood onward will improve one's digital citizenship. Technology is rapidly altering how they communicate and interact. Almost 2 billion jobs are also likely to become obsolete by then because of technological advance. The children are digital native. But this does not imply that they understand or practice basic digital ethics. A report from Deloitte Global and the Global Business Coalition for Education said that we are in a moment where companies can help to shape the future of how they train and develop their next workforce. Besides, Children who start working at a young age might keep their manners for a long time. Children are born with numerous innate characteristics, but they do not come pre-programmed with manners or the ability to behave responsibly. Preparing tomorrow was force of Fourth Industrial Revolution article outlined four set of skills that young age need to prepare them for the future workplace. They are workforce readiness, soft skills, technical skills, and entrepreneurship. Under those headings come a range of general skills that include problem solving, collaboration, initiative, social norms, resourcefulness, and also optimism. Next, many of the children's first occupation will include dealing with money. Chai workers can learn how to count, change, and do the basic money math so that they can work efficiently without the use of a calculator or cash register. People who can work out change are too common, 
and this symbolize a far wider issue of illiteracy and also basically math illiteracy. This is a life skill that goes beyond employment. If a child cannot easily perform fundamental money sums in their head, they are significantly more prone to frauds and simple mistakes that can be costly in the long term. Making change is the first step toward financial literacy. In conclusion, to rebut the opponent's stance, Espert had proposed educating the children to consider long-term and operate their careers like a business while thinking like an entrepreneur as with a new ability. They must be vigilant and aware of their surroundings as they adjust to the workplace, the real world and also their abilities. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. So my name is Green Muhammad Shahmi and as the last and final speaker, I would just like to reiterate our stance and position in refusing any person below the age of 18 years old from working and receiving payment in our attempt to abolish forced labour and protect children's well-being in Malaysia particularly due to the inadequacy of existing law, especially that of the Children and Young Person Employment Act 1966, which aims to restrict child labour and the scope of work available to be done by them, whereas even taking into acknowledgement the recent 2019 amendment which reduced the age limit of a working child from 15 to 13 years old, the redefinition of the term light work which had now become more encompassing and the increasing of punishment for first-time offenders which failed to be incorporated and addressed comprehensively by the opposition side, it remains ineffective if the root cause of poverty failed to be addressed properly in certain rural areas areas in Malaysia where cases of child working remains prevalent. In fact, the law stipulated under this act had also resulted in other problems such as the children opting to indulge in the informal forms of employment including that of in the restaurants, local shops as well as other businesses where due to it having multiple and different working conditions, many of these do not align with the comprehensive guidelines described under the aforementioned act. We had also forwarded the idea that the involvement of children in the workforce may negatively impact their education, as believe it or not, the allocation of time for them to go to school, study at home and work is something which remains unresolved to this day, as there is a high chance that they might fail to balance between all of this, especially taking into consideration a study which found that many children do work more than the allocated six hours as in the act and more than 50% of this total number were involved in a daily shift of 10 to 12 hours. With that being said, more effort should also instead be placed in changing the mindset and bringing the realisation to those parents who believe that their child is better off working than learning at school, which again only consumes money due to their very educational background with the absence of formal education all the way up to the secondary level. Thus, this is the reason why we should place more emphasis on education, which important which importance ultimately outweighs that of working with the benefits of the children being the most important consideration taken into account. Apart from that, avoiding child exploitation is also something which we are trying to achieve by forwarding this motion in the house as ultimately they are more exposed to these negative circumstances and multiple risks by involving themselves in work outside, however light the work may be, and those who generate income and those who generate income from home are also not safe from these threats as it may exist anywhere and this is where the importance of education comes into the picture in educating them regarding these unexplored and new aspects to the world which may become a dangerous threat in the future towards them. Interestingly, the opposition had also provided some examples of successful working young children in their submission such as that of Taira Kamaruzaman but they overlooked some important factors and the dark side to this issue such as that which had occurred to one Alminda binti Jamilin in Keningau Sabah in 2014 where she who had been working as a caddy since she was 10 years old had died at the age of 12 after being hit by a golf ball on the right side of her neck while working and this issue remained unaddressed until this very day due to her poor status and absence of legal identity, whereas she should have been at school by law if not due to her circumstances. Last but not least, it is also our opinion 
that it denies economic incentives on the part of the employer by refusing work and payment to those below 18 years old, as we should place more emphasis on solving the prevalent issue of poverty, which forces these children to work and earn money in the first place. Nonetheless, it does not mean that they are not allowed to engage and participate in the community in order to acquire the required soft skills and self-development as stated by the opposition. It just means that if they did do something which generates income, then the proceed might have to go towards the parents instead of being obtained by the child directly for it to be used towards their own well-being. Ultimately, prevention is better than cure and this is what we are trying to achieve by forwarding this motion in the house in order to avoid many arising problems in the future which are associated with the well-being of these children. With that being said, that will be all from us government speakers. Thank you very much. Research from the PubMed Central found that there is less evidence pertinent to the effect on the children's psychology, well-being as they being added uh, values in involving the labor activities, especially in affluent countries such as uh, Japan, US, and UK. Child level were labeled as a mechanism uh, to promote self-development among children, especially in exploring myriad of skills, strengths, and ample exposure to the self-development itself. And then, uh, especially when they, before they're stepping to adulthood, their adulthood, it is important to note that child level can nurture and elevate the minor psychosocial value which is the most imperative aspect that need to be considered for the child's welfare. And then it was found that the children will gain and develop self-confidence when dealing with outside world in most aspects of life. By having self-confidence, they are able to communicate well, be more independent, perform better in problem solving, resilience and other beneficial values that can bring them and prepare them well towards enhancements of future life. They also managed to build self-esteem by involving uh, themselves in social labor environment where it includes promoting, presenting proposals, negotiating, communication among colleagues and so forth. When they are able to grasp uh, these skills in obtaining self-confidence, it will be easy for them to face various of circumstances in life and then there will it will bring abundant of abundant of opportunity and benefits for them in coping with the, their life and then the development of self confidence will give them a mature mentality and mindset especially in the circumstances that will involve crucial decision making uh, a right decision is a vital aspect in life because it will it will identify their future their needs and then the how do they handle big problems and then the self-confidence which involves decision-making skills by the guided or by the guidance of their genuine self-confidence uh, the self-confidence which involves psychological psychosocial training will reduce the rate of mental illness for instance anxiety depression bipolar and other illnesses that will affect their well-being because the self-esteem that they had managed to build by participating in labor had made them become bolder and mentally prepared for various of various and different types of obstacles that will they will encounter in their life and then for uh, the fa the finding of Garnier D and Benefis E stated in their writing that the female dom domestic servants in Senegal receive better nutrition status than non-working girls due to their working life, encouraging them to consume adequate nutrition. And they mostly involve with an active lifestyle since they are working as a labor. The working lifestyle itself will trigger their craving for nutrition and also the movement or the activities they involve in the labor itself will give, give strength to their body and based on this evidence it can be said that health of the children will not be affected direct uh, affected directly as they will enjoy a healthier lifestyle compared with the non-working children children health is fundamental factors fundamental factors in life 
fundamental uh, factors in every children's life and child, child labour is actually contributing into the increase of nutrition intake among the children. The social so skills can be improved by taking part in child labour as the working experience will expose them to various of people from diverse backgrounds including uh, different age, religion, races and etc. And social skills mainly involve communication, interaction, engagement with people which is the most fundamental value in life of a children that can actually attract and add more skills for them and then it will it will attract more opportunity and encourage them to become a better individuals in the future especially in their when they're stepping in the in, in the adulthood child labor promotes these social skills to the children by encouraging them in participating participating the working experience which includes communicating with people, negotiating, teamwork and other social elements that will shape a better and a healthy character in them in order to become an, an excellent individual that will contribute to the society and the nation. And lastly, child labor will provide effective curfew with which contribute to the decrease of criminals in both children and will pr protect them from criminals, criminals matters. Curfew is the method that has impactful role in protecting the security of the children from unwanted circumstances. When they take part in child labor, they will given a curfew for a particular time. They must come back home before stipulated time. And this will not only protect the children, but will also help them to practice good discipline as they manage to obey the given curfew. So, in conclusion, people tend to view the idea of child labor as an unpleasant perspective when it is actually can be applied in a concept where the children will still gain protection from forced labor, unlawful discrimination, negative influences, and other factors that relate to the children's welfare. In this situation, the children can still gain psychosocial benefits in practicing child labor that consists of self-development and protection uh, and their protection. Child labor can be seen as a training and preparation for the minor in the future circumstances and they can cope well ever since they were young. So they were trained well ever since they were in young age. That's all for me.